I am making crab cakes. <laughs> How am I doing that? Well, you're going to see. I'm gonna use some very savory ingredients and we're going to have for dinner tonight a wonderful fermented black bean, uh, green bean and shiitake mushroom stir fry, no oil used, I stir fry, dry fry. And we're gonna have these wonderful crab cakes and then we're gonna have an Asian slaw. And um, recipes for all of that can be found on my website, nansimmonson.com. So let's begin. Ingredient number one, canned whole artichoke hearts. These have been drained and rinsed. I'm gonna throw them in well, pretty well rinsed. And then I'm adding, we've got a good protein source, a can of organic garbanzo beans. I use organic as often as I can because it's just too prevalent. Um, the spraying that goes on uh, with non-organic foods and they spray to keep down weeds, they spray to, keep, spray to keep down bugs and I don't want that stuff in me. So I always go to the organic. And this is Hearts of Palm. When I opened this can, there were four columns. This is a partial column. My hands are washed, I just washed them. Uh, this is, it would have been about that long. Hearts of palm are literally that, the heart of a certain palm. And I pulled them out, I drained it, I rinsed them, I cut them into pieces, but I wanted to show you the can. And those are going in as well. So what do I have in here? I have Whole Foods plant-based. They are hearts of palm, garbanzo beans, and um, uh, artichoke hearts. Now, I'm gonna add the flavor. First of all, I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And I'm gonna be tasting because I may add more. And I'm not gonna give you amounts, the amounts are on the recipe because when I taste, I may do a lot of adjusting and that will be um, reflected on the recipe. I'm using an old fashioned seasoning for seafood, and that is Old Bay seasoning, which is primarily celery salt. It's celery salt and some other spices, red pepper, black pepper, and paprika. And I'm also putting in a little bit of extra paprika. I'm putting in some dill weed, and I'm putting in something to add sort of a fishiness, a sea vegetable, and it could have been seaweed, a few sheets of, in this case, I could have used maybe three or four sheets of seaweed, and you can find this at just about any store, roasted seaweed snack, and in this case, again, organic. Or I could use dulse granules, organic dulse granules. I could have used kombu, which is also seaweed, and I used the dulse, so I put in, oh, what did I put? Well, I believe it was one or two, and I'll let you know. Um, and this is going to give it that bit of um, kind of, I wanna say, well, that sea aroma. I'm putting in chopped garlic. I'm adding chopped cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can use a bit of parsley. If you don't have fresh parsley, you can use dry parsley. I have a half of a um, chopped red onion. And I saved some of the aquafaba. That's what it's called, that fluid, the juice, the broth that you get from the can of garbanzo beans when you open it because if this is a little dry, I'll add that to add a little moisture. I'm also going to put in, I'm gonna begin by putting in a half a cup, this is a whole cup, but I'm gonna put in a half a cup of um, original real panko. And ooh, I didn't get organic. I got gluten-free, non-GMO, that's helpful, um, but not organic. Well, 
what I really needed was gluten-free in my case, and that's hard to find, and dairy-free, so it's a vegan. And let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit, because I like spice, just a little bit of red chili flakes. Okay, and I don't want this to be mashed to a paste. Now, I just don't know if you can tell what I'm using here. I'm so excited about this. Before I put this on, what you were looking at was my Vitamix. I got a new Vitamix that would accommodate a new offering of the Vitamix company, and that is a food processor that will fit on the base of a Vitamix. So in my case, I had to get the one that um, they that would adapt that was adaptable for the um, food processor, but I did it, and I, I just love this. And you could go to Vitamix.com and see what I'm talking about. I think it was a bit of an investment, maybe five six hundred dollars. But Christmas is coming up, and boy, is it nice not to have to pull out anything else. And this just goes up in a high cupboard. Okay, so I want to break it up. I don't want to open this. Sorry about that. All right, I'm going to turn it and just, oops, a little bit of parsley there and mix it just a bit. Oh, oh my gosh, does this smell good. Oddly enough, it actually smells a bit crabby. Crabby as in crab. I loved crab cakes. Actually, I loved seafood, but the oceans are becoming depleted, I think. And they are so polluted with plastics and mercury and garbage um, and fish have been way overfished that I am very comfortable bypassing that. All right, that may be it. I don't want it to be too chunky or it won't hold together, but I also don't want it to be too finely mixed. How are we doing? I'll show it to you when I'm convinced that this is what I want, and I, I think I am. I'm afraid if I do it too much, see, I see bits of garbanzo bean that, and bits of the artichoke that are not, um, okay, I'm gonna do it one more time, and that's it. And if you have, <laughs> For sure, that's it. Put this aside. I'm gonna taste. Oh, this is nice. Okay. You know what? It's a little more pasty than it should have been. I could have stopped earlier, but let me show you. Look. See? But do you see there's still chunks? See that? And yes, there's still plenty of texture here. Let me taste and see what I think. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's actually perfect. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, move this out of the way. ready to make the crab cake. Actually, I don't need any of this anymore. Although, I'm gonna allow for some panko crumbs to be on the outside of the crab cakes. I need this lemon again. 
keep this and this. I'm gonna empty. food processor bowl. All right. And this makes a lot. Is this expensive? Mm, I don't think so. The, I'm trying to think of the price of everything. The garbanzo beans were 99 cents, even organic. I got them from Trader Joe's. The, um, actually I got it all from Trader Joe's. Every one of those cans were right there on the shelf next to each other, actually pretty close to each other. I'll take this out of the sink. These are the green beans that I've washed that will go, I'm gonna put this right here, that will be cooked with fermented black beans. I'm experimenting with something. The recipe calls for using about a third of a cup of the, um, mixture to make a crab cake. I want a nice big crab cake. I don't want a little teeny one. And I like the size of this. This is a funnel. A lot of us have funnels. I'm gonna try and see what I can do to make a crab cake using the little slice of parchment paper that I cut off when I put the parchment paper on this tray. And I'm gonna see what about a third of a cup, this is not a full half of a cup, will look like in here. The reason I'm using the parchment paper also, I think I'm gonna go for a half a cup. I'm experimenting as I'm talking to you. All right. See, I can pull this out if it doesn't come out and then I can flatten it, but I have, oh, I like this. All right, now, this is all experiment while I'm talking to you. I do this a lot. And, excuse me a minute. I'm gonna put this on some crumbs. All right. All right. So I am, I'm using, forget third of a cup, I'm using a half a cup, I'm using a silly little tool to allow me to get a rounded shape that I can then just flatten out. These are gonna be nice size crab cakes. One per person will be just fine. All right, and another, and then we'll see how many we get. The recipe called for a third of a cup per, and well, one of the recipes. I did what I do a lot, looked at three vegan crab cake recipes, and then came up based on things that I like and flavors that I like to marry with my own version. And one of the recipes that called for a third of a cup, one of them just said, make, oh, I don't know what it said, make six or eight and didn't talk about the amount you used. That would have been a kind of a hunt and peck kind of a thing. All right. Sorry. Okay, so this is going pretty fast. Let me slide this over in case I need more room. Now what's gonna happen here, I'm gonna let them rest just a bit because I'm gonna make a tartar sauce and I don't wanna cook this until my husband and I are just about to eat because they're cooked about um, well, I want to say three to six minutes per side, depends on how thin it is, um, how dense, of course, and 
three to six minutes per side is not a lot. I'm using a stand pan. I'll mention that later. If I'm cutting, I may or may not cook them in front of you. I may simply show you what they look like. But the scan pan is a non-stick surface. And here we go. What these additional crumbs are going to do is that they're going to give me, I think, a crunchier crab cake, no oil being used. All right. I'm actually quite surprised at how moist these are. Okay. And let's do two more. But I'm going to sprinkle a little on the tops of all of them. Okay. There. And that'll help dry out the surfaces. So with a half a cup in each, it looks like we're getting eight crab cakes. That's pretty good. In other words, I could feed, unless somebody had a really big appetite, I could feed eight people a crab cake, top it with a tartar sauce that I'm going to show you in just a minute, serve it with a salad of some kind. Tonight will be the Asian slaw, but it could have been a big, beautiful green salad. And the green beans. And what a nice meal. All vegan, as delicious as can be. Nothing had to die for it. Sorry, but that's what happens with animals, and um, there, okay. One of the recipes said put it in the freezer for 20 minutes to let it sit and chill and marry. I might do that if I'm not going to cook them right away. There, let me show you. All right, take a look. Doesn't that look nice? I think it's gonna look terrific when they're nice and brown. So I'm putting these in the freezer. And I'm not saying that in the recipe, I'll let you know how that went and recommend it if I think it really did need it. All right, another handy tool that I love a mini cuisinart. I bought this for a song somewhere and don't even remember where. And I love it because it uses so little space when I want to do something like this. I'm making a tartar sauce and there are a number of ways I could have made tartar sauce with mayonnaise, with vegan mayonnaise, which is called, well, one of them is veganaise. Um, problem is that's loaded with oil and I avoid using extra oil. I eat foods with oil, for example, nuts and seeds and olives and avocado, but I don't add oil to my foods. I don't see any reason to calorie wise. I don't see any reason to add um, additional omega-3 fatty, I mean six fatty acids, so I just don't. And a large group of whole food plant-based advocates feel the same way. So what am I going to add? Okay, I'm going to add some dill, some ground pepper, and you'll get your, your um, amounts on this, and a little bit of sea salt. That's all been mixed in. Now I'm throwing this in because I love it. 
and I'll let you know what I think of the flavor. Well, you'll probably see because I'm gonna taste it. And that is rinsed and they'll be chopped in here. Um, capers. Capers have a, not kind of fishy, but there's, there's something special about their flavor. I'm gonna add some mustard, Dijon mustard. And a couple of tablespoons. Should I have one or two to start with? Mm, I'm going to do two. A lemon juice. And then I'll see if I want to add more. This is fresh squeezed. I always had them on hand. I actually buy a massive amount of lemons and I squeeze them with my electric juicer and freeze two cups at a time. So when I say freshly squeezed, that's as freshly squeezed as they get except the day I do it. Then I'm going to add, I love slightly sweetened tartar sauce. And so I'm gonna start by adding a teaspoon of, this is organic pickle relish, sweet pickle relish. Now some of you won't want this because there's no way to get around the fact that there's sugar in here. Okay, sorry. All right, so what's going to, oh my gosh, I love the look of this. What's gonna happen is we're going to have this toasted, crunchy top, even though I'm not using oil, I'm using a, um, non-stick skillet and um, the, the crab cake, and then we'll put on top of it um, a nice serving of the um, tartar sauce. Let's see what I think. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I can taste the capers, no more than a teaspoon. That would be too much, but that's really, really good. Mm. Do I want a little more mustard? I'll put a touch more mustard. And that's it. And I don't want it any sweeter. That tastes perfect. Otherwise, it would be sweet and odd for this. And, um, oh, and I also added um, a half a teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. All right. Now, when this, I'm gonna be right back. What I had used, and I don't know if I showed you, was silken tofu. Rather than using mayonnaise, I used a bean. This is fermented tofu and Silken tofu is a little different than, even though it's still firm, uh, is a little different than the conventional tofu. It's not in the refrigerator section. It's where the Asian foods are, but on a shelf. And it has more water than conventional tofu. And, but I always get the organic. And it is, um, it has protein. It has protein, it has calcium. It has fiber, not a lot, but some, um, and it's a whole food. Well, slightly processed, not completely whole food, but a very good source of um, a creaminess. I use it for tofu mayonnaise. Now I'm using it for tofu um, uh, tartar sauce and it will, in the refrigerator, thicken up a little bit. And what you're going to find, if you transition to whole food plant-based, you're going to have sauces. Uh, sorry. You're going to have sauces that you're going to fall in love with, and it makes everything taste better. The tofu sour cream, I call it that, actually adds protein to a dish, it adds a cool, kind of a slightly lemony, um, uh, well, what sour cream does, but without any animal product and without the additional fat. 
tofu is a legume that has a decent amount of fat. It's probably about 30% fat, but it's encased in its whole food uh, body. Uh, the beans, whether it's beans or tofu, you're still getting the same amount of fat in it, but it's a whole food fat, and that doesn't bother me at all. Okay. This will go in my refrigerator, and that is my um, tartar sauce. I'll be back to you in just a few minutes when I'm cooking, I will cook it for you, when I'm cooking the um, crab cakes, and you can see what you think. I'll be back. Hello. All right, I'm back, apron and all, ready to cook. I heated my scan pan. I like this non-stick pan. I think it's one of the best on the market. It's one of the safest. It has a titanium ceramic coating, not a Teflon coating, and it doesn't chip away. I, these are, I put them in the freezer. You saw that they're looking beautiful, and I think they needed the rest. I, they absorbed some additional moisture into those panko crumbs, and that's why it was so soft before. I have a spray bottle after that whole thing about oil that I said. I have a spray bottle. I sprayed, and then I wiped it out, and you can see that there's nothing but a film in here. Why did I do that? Because I was worried that the, uh, the crumbs might still stick. Maybe that wasn't the case. So I have it nice and hot. I put a sprinkle of water and it sizzled. And I'm going to put as many as I can get on here to cook. It'll probably be four. And we're going to give them... We'll see. I'm saying three to six minutes per side. And... We'll see what we think. In the meantime, while these are cooking, I'm going to grab what I just made as our side dish, and that is my fermented black bean shiitake mushroom green beans. Now, the problem is I don't remember what I am calling it on my website. It's either green beans with fermented black beans and shiitake mushrooms, but I'm pretty sure it's fermented black beans, shiitake mushrooms, and green beans. Anyway, let me show you. I think it's a fabulous dish. It's what I call a stir fry, and yet there's no oil. I put hot green beans into my wok. Actually, take that back. I heat my wok quite high, put the green beans that have been washed so they have a little bit of moisture in them in there, and then I stir, I, um, I'm gonna say blacken them, but not really. I let them get a little bit charred in the pan at one point when I've charred them well enough and again, they're not really black. They're more like, like that. It's almost like when you get roasted corn, uh, frozen roasted corn to put in a dish where you want a smokier flavor, that kind of a thing. Then I added reconstituted sliced shiitake mushrooms and garlic and um, rinsed, let me put this a little higher. And rinsed um, black beans, fermented black beans. I got them on Amazon and um, kept stirring it. I used some of the broth from the, um, and it's all on the menu, on the recipe, some of the broth that I got from soaking the sh dried shiitake mushrooms, which I get on Amazon, organic. I buy a pound of them at a time, and I think it's about $25 a pound. 
um, but it goes forever. You use only a few ounces reconstituted, and this is probably no more than an ounce and a half to two ounces reconstituted. So it's peanuts, garlic, fermented black beans, shiitake mushrooms, and um, tamari. The tamari is added at the last minute. It kind of caramelizes in the pan, flavors all of this. The green beans are crunchy and really well flavored. So that will go along. with our crab cakes. And let's flip this over and see what it's looking like. Nope, not ready. I flip that, so I'll flip these. That one's a little more brown. Mm. Nope, not ready. I'm gonna cheat and take a little piece. See what I think. Oh, that's nice. That's going to be lovely with the um, tartar sauce. I'm gonna let this sit a little bit longer, get them toasted well on both sides, and um, I'll show you one plated. All right, be back. I'm so excited about this dish I'm going to make. Have you been to Spain? Have you been to Barcelona? Well, at Barcelona, I, well, I've been there a couple of times. I'm thinking of Sagrada Familia, the huge church that Gaudi made. It's almost like a, an enormous mosaic, one of the most spectacular things in the world. Well, the last time I was there, and I'm sure it was that way the first time, but I don't remember, we walked around the back of it and there were vendors selling Spanish food. Maybe it was just a food fair, I don't know. But there were vendors with enormous pots of paella. They're actually pans, big flat pans on braziers. And paella is traditionally not only a rice dish, but a seafood dish. And there's quite often some meats in it and some chicken. Well, if you know me, you know I haven't had any meat or chicken for almost three years. Actually, it'll be, it'll be three years this month. And um, I love paella. I loved it back then. And when I saw this recipe with that Plant Strong, look at plantstrong.com, you'll find some wonderful whole food plant-based um, recipes and menus. It's a great site. I thought, I'm gonna try it. So I haven't tried this yet. You're going to be watching me follow their directions. I changed little thing, a few things already. Um, but when you get the recipe that well, I'll have on my uh, YouTube site, uh, that will be, and that will include any changes that I made. All right, did you see, I don't know, well, you couldn't tell, you couldn't see the fire under here, but this pan has been on for a while, and it is really hot. I'm looking for my spatula, there it is. Really hot. Did you notice something else about it? Maybe you didn't, because I didn't show you this way. There's no oil in this pan. Now this pan is a scan pan. It's one of the safest of the non-stick, well, it's in a group of the safest non-stick uh, uh, cookware brands. Uh, Google top five safest non-stick cookware. You'll see scan pan, you'll see several others, others, all plaid may be one of them. And they're using a titanium ceramic, unlike the old um, Teflon, which was actually quite dangerous. As it heated, it gave out gases that, well, killed birds for one thing, one thing, but they also were very damaging to our lungs. So I'm cooking this on medium. Onions are quite moist, and so they caramelize in a hot pan. You don't need oil for them to do that. I'm cooking them until they're translucent. That means that they lose, they become more opaque. And so they're caramelizing, they're becoming more opaque, which means that they lose some of that 
strident flavor and um, the caramelization makes them a little bit sweeter as well. So I'll keep talking while I'm letting them do their thing. I think I'll even put a little bit hotter. Quite often with this method, I'll add a couple of tablespoons of broth or water. Uh, I prefer broth. Broth actually, um, uh, oh shoot, I've lost the word. Um, oh, evaporates. <laughs> Quite often evaporates much more quickly than water does, actually. You'll put in a broth, it'll go bubble, bubble, brown a little, and be gone. And then you'll do it again and maybe again when you're caramelizing something that's called deglazing the pan when you add that. But this is already smelling great. It's becoming more translucent. I don't know if you can see that it's less white. It's a little bit more beige. And what this recipe calls for, instead of all of those seafoods that make paella so yummy, but I don't eat seafood. For one thing, I don't want to kill something to eat it. For another thing, our oceans are so polluted that 99.9% .9 of the seafood we get is polluted. Even the wild caught quite often because of some new laws that allow it to be called wild caught when it really isn't. They are they're farmed and then let free and then they catch them and they call that wild caught or vice versa. So I just don't want things in my body that are so heavily polluted by polluted oceans, microplastics, and all that I've said. Uh, although I loved paella and I loved seafood. So, instead, what I'm going to be putting in here is garbanzo beans, asparagus, and artichoke hearts. To flavor it, to make it savory, I'm adding, in just a minute, this is looking good. It's getting brown just a tiny bit. I'm going to let it go. And actually, as much as I'd like to hurry it so that I don't waste your time, um, you really don't want to hurry it because the caramelization of onion, now burning is another thing. It will get bitter. Uh, actually, not nearly as bitter as if you add for example, I'm going to be adding five nice-sized cloves of sliced garlic. And if I added that too early and it became too hot because it doesn't have the moisture to caramelize well, uh, it will toast slightly but not caramelize well, I would end up with very bitter garlic. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of broth to this. This is my homemade broth. Can you hear it bubbling up? You can kind of see it do that. It actually enhances the browning. Look how quickly it's browning. Because while it was in the pan, caramelizing, it was leaving little brown bits that when a little bit of broth hits them, um, brown up very quickly. Can you see that? Now I'm going to add, again, five cloves of sliced garlic. So it's not finely minced. It's sliced so that if I get a bit of that on my tongue while I'm eating, it's just a delightful little treat because by then it's slightly toasty. It's going to have been cooked, so it'll be sweet. All right, now I'm letting the garlic brown just slightly. You can hear this lovely little, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm losing all this food. I'm creating this pile down here. I'm stepping around it. It's kind of the way I cook, actually. Uh, this is nice. Do you see the difference between when I started and right now? I think it's just about ready for my next ingredient. 
I'm smelling the garlic. It is not burnt. The onion smells lovely. This was a very big, nicely, finely sliced onion, five cloves of garlic. This is about 10 ounces of tomato. So the recipe called for two tomatoes or 260 grams, but that translates to about 10 grams, I mean 10 ounces. So I had a farm fresh tomato from the farm store. We go every Sunday to this area. I live in Riverside, California, that's Southern California, about 60 minutes east of LA. And we have a family that owns, I don't know how many acres, 10 acres, 15 acres, and they farm there in the middle of the city. I'm sure it's used to, uh, it was residential. I'm sure it's worth a, a bundle, but they've done this for decades, maybe 20, 30 years. And um, they uh, pick the food, sell it that day, they don't sell it the next day. They have new food out and you get what is growing in their field. So it's all farm fresh, no spray, and it's not organic because they haven't gone for that certification. But we all use it and we know that they don't spray. They tell us they don't and there's never been any evidence that they did. Okay, now I'm going to add the tomato is breaking down. Let me get that just a little bit more broken down. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm still throwing things on the floor. We'll be eating this for dinner tonight. It's about 20 to five. And um, I expect that I'll be able to serve this at about 5.30 because you're going to see that it's going to set a while for the flavors to marry before I actually serve it. All right, I'm gonna put in red bell pepper, a medium bell pepper. Look at this beauty, that was from the Corona Family Farm Store. Mm. It's, I used a little less than this, that would have been a bit too much. And, Let me get this mixed in and just slightly softened. What's happening as I'm doing this is that even the tomato juice, because there was a lot of broth from that tomato as I sliced it up and diced it, kept every bit of that, all of that is creating a rich, um, I'm gonna say sort of sweetness, the way tomato paste compares to just a raw tomato. It's sweeter because it's um, more concentrated. And pretty soon, I'm gonna put in a cup and a half of short grain brown rice. If you're a purist, you're probably gonna use an arborio rice, the, the kind that you use for risotto, or you'll use a specialized paella rice. I think a short grain organic brown rice is just fine and certainly easier to find. And now I'm getting a beautiful bubbling. See this? Everything is mirroring. Everything is softening nicely, but just as importantly, I'm getting flavors, and that's why I'm not rushing this. Then I'm gonna throw in the rice, and I'm gonna brown it somewhat. Now I um, rinsed the rice. So it's probably ideally you want dry rice, it browns better, but I always rinse my grains and my rices because I think they need to be. I think that they are picked in fields and sit in silos and they're packaged in warehouses and they can, by their nature, stay around a long, long time. And 
I just think it's a good idea to rinse things off of something like that, just like we would an apple or a pear before we eat it. Now, I'm letting this um, absorb the water that I had in there, and I'm adding a couple of tablespoons of water to which, I don't want to miss one tiny little bit in here, to which I broke up saffron. Now, what is saffron besides incredibly expensive? Oh, man. Yes, that makes me smile. I love the fragrance of saffron. And that's what makes a paella, a lot of Spanish dishes, but especially uh, a paella. Saffron is from a plant like a crocus that has a stamen. The stamen, you have petals, you have the stamen come out. They are literally, each little piece of saffron is, um, where would I put it where you can see it? Well, I guess just right there, is a stamen. And they pick these stamens by hand. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to overdo it. If you overdo saffron, it can be really harsh. But I just completely lost control. <laughs> anyway, I bought this one at um, it's Kirkland, so at Costco. Um, saffron from um, uh, La Mancha, Spain. Spanish saffron, and there are some make-believe things that aren't saffron at all. They're from other plants gathered in um, ways that are uh, rather aggressive and use equipment, so it's not the same. That means they get all kinds of plant parts. Okay, now I'm going to stir in three cups of broth. This is my own homemade broth. And I'm going to cover this. The thing that makes paella a prize, if it's done well, is that you'll get something called a socaret. Uh, S O C A R R A T, socaret. And it's, it's Spanish for to burn, but you're not burning. What you're doing, and I'm covering this now, and I'm going to put it on medium and I'm going to watch it carefully. But what happens is that the rice on the bottom of this wide pan with a relatively hot fire will. Um, as it's absorbing moisture, it's also getting a lot of heat. You're never stirring it. You're leaving it alone. And it starts to crisp up. And that's what you want at the bottom of a paella pan. That's this crisp layer of rice. Let's see what happens today. So I'm going to let this sit for 20 minutes or 25 minutes. And then I'm going to test it and see how the rice is. Then I'm going to lay over, uh-oh, was I supposed to, hold on a minute. Oh, 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 just a minute. Let me look at my recipe. Um, sorry to put you through this. Da-da-da. Uh, ah, I forgot that part. Okay. I'm supposed to add my paprika, one whole tablespoon of paprika. I added to the recipe, which it wasn't called for, some oregano, a little less than a half a teaspoon of oregano, and some cumin, because those are spices I very much like. And the recipe called for a tablespoon of um, of 
chili flakes. I think that might have taken our mouth off. So I put one teaspoon of chili flakes. I'll taste it later and I can add more later. Okay, sorry for the snafu. All right, now I'll go back and describe things. Okay, get this going. Okay, 25 minutes. And I'm going to then add to the top of it. If this were a traditional paella, I would, the top would then be decorated with chorizo, sausage, with, again, maybe a chicken leg, um, a piece of meat, but usually seafood, shrimp, scallops, things like that. But instead, I'm using uh, garbanzo beans and I make my own garbanzo beans. I just make a couple of pounds in my Instant Pot and with a lot of savory flavors in the broth and drain it off well and then refrigerate them or freeze them actually in one quart bags after they've been drained. And when you put them in the bags and you freeze them, you can break them apart in the bags very easily. And so I have packages in my freezer of my own homemade garbanzo beans that were organic and that were seasoned the way I liked with some onion, with some garlic, with some carrot, with some celery. So very, very flavorful broth when I'm finished, which I save and I use for a soup. And, um, but those are all in chunks so I can get them out of the broth easily. I don't chop them up. And then, as I said, I'll be putting these on top of it, artichoke heart, asparagus, and um, garbanzo beans. And I think it's gonna be great. And you'll get to see what it looks like. I'll be back. Okay, I've let this cook about 30 minutes. I'm gonna lift the pan. I can hear it sizzle at the bottom. I'm going to be adding the rest of the broth. I'm going to put the rest of the vegetables in. And the instructions say to jiggle it a little bit, but I'm going to put the broth in first. Okay, let me just get this set up. So we're adding garbanzo beans instead of scallops. <laughs> I'll take them. We're adding artichoke hearts. The recipe called for artichoke hearts. Didn't say slice them in half. I cut one in half to see what would happen, to see if maybe it, well, to see if it'll stand up to the cooking and not just disintegrate and fall into the, the individual leaves that is what artichoke is about, uh, artichoke heart anyway. Yeah, because this one looks really fragile, like the whole thing is going to fall apart. But let's let's see. Okay, and then I'm going to scatter the asparagus. These are stems. Each the I had a bunch of asparagus, and I cut them into thirds for the directions of the recipe. And again, if we find that something here didn't work as well as I had hoped, we'll do it differently. And I'll note it on the recipe. I'm gonna scatter just a little bit of parsley here. The rest will go in at the last minute. Now, some recipes say no peas, in paella, and yet I've had paella with peas in it. Um, and I kind of like that, I like the color. So I have some frozen peas I'm gonna add at the very last minute when I let it sit. Now, I'm adding this, put the heat back up, I'm adding this very, I'll call it gingerly, around the edges, so not to displace what I've already done. Okay. I'm sort of putting gently in the middle just because I added the tablespoon of lemon juice and I want to disperse that a little. 
All right. You know what I didn't do? I didn't test the rice. Why don't I test the rice? Let me find a place to get in there. Mm, definitely needs cooking. But then again, brown rice normally takes 40 to 45 minutes. So, and we are, although I, I am not a whole food plant-based um, SOS free completely um, cook. I avoid sugar of any kind. I will use dates to sweeten things, whole food, plant-based. I don't use oil, salt, oil, sugar free, SOS free, but I do use some salt. And when I tasted this, I, I, and it's, it's basically what you're used to. Some people, if you are working on, wait, let me look at time. Okay. If you are, um, fighting a cardiovascular, uh, condition, uh, absolutely get rid of the salt. As a matter of fact, follow Caldwell Esselstyn, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. All of his food is whole food, plant-based, SOS free, period, end of report. Um, some of the whole food, plant-based doctors are not quite as, um, uh, I was gonna say dogmatic, but that sounds negative, as restrictive with the salt. But we should be restrictive with salt uh, because it's in everything. And that's one of the reasons that I avoid um, uh, processed food as well. Full of salt, full of oils. And those aren't good for us. Those oils are so high in the omega-6s that it pushes out um, the, the ratio that we're trying to work with, omega-6 to three, and that's about a one to one or a three at the highest of the sixes to one of the omega threes. Those are the long chain fatty acids that we have to add to our diet through food. And um, if we have a lot of omega sixes from the oils that we get from processed food, because it's in all of them, or using a lot of oils in our own cooking, and that's one of the reasons I don't use oil, um, it, that becomes inflammatory. The omega-6s are inflammatory, threes are actually anti-inflammatory and um, help build up our immunity. In any case, I'm gonna let this cook for 10 minutes. I'll be back to you and probably just to see what the rice looks like, to add the peas, then I have to let it sit another five to 10 minutes just to settle and then I'll serve it. And if by then my company is here, I can tell you've got some company coming, and I'm ready to serve, I'll take a photo of the dish. I may not start up the video again. Hope you're having a great day. <laughs> I know I am, and I'll be back to you in a bit. Bye-bye. Okay, so I'm back. It's been 10 minutes. I tested the rice just before I came on. I tested it. And it has a tiny bit of bite to it, but I'm okay with that because what we're gonna do is I have these frozen peas. Why frozen? Because we don't want them to get soft. We just want them, they're already pre-cooked. All frozen vegetables are blanched. We just want them to still keep their color. I'm gonna add a little bit of the, I, I realized I could use that a little bit more of the pepper flakes. I ground on it a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. The rest of the parsley is gonna go on when I'm ready to um, serve it. And I'm gonna cover it, take it off the heat and let it sit. I have a kale salad that I'm about to serve. We'll eat that. We want this to rest just a little bit, flavors to marry, to let it settle in. 
We'll see how things go with the rice, the crispy bottom. I'll let you know on the recipe if I was able to accomplish that. And I think that's that. I'm going to cook you one of my favorite side dishes, and it is shiitake mushrooms, green beans, black beans, and garlic. No oil because in my diet, whole food, plant-based, no animal products on my side. You just add things in and let things go when you're ready if you choose to. I don't use oil. It's not that I don't use fat in my food, but I use whole foods, and so I get my fat from avocados and soy and even oats have a fat. This pan is very hot. I got it at a Chinese market. I absolutely love it because it has a lot of room. And I'm throwing in green beans that I bought from Trader Joe's. This isn't green bean season. I would have gone to my um, farm store and gotten them fresh that way. But these are organic green beans. I love the Blue Lake when they have them. It's an entire pound. My husband and I can eat this it, the, the full dish in one meal and I'm using it as a side dish because I don't have a, a well I have a protein source the green beans have protein the peanuts have protein the mushrooms have protein um, but you could also kick it up a notch by adding cubed uh, roasted or toasted or baked um, uh, tofu I'm going to step away, put that there. Now, I'm letting this sit for just a moment. The pan is really hot. So what I'm doing is I'm searing these green beans. And when I got them out of the bag, or if I had gotten them from the farm store, I take off just the stem end, this little pointy end is just fine. And if they were long, I broke them in half or just cut the grouping of them in half. See, here's one of the stems. And this stem that escaped me, and this stem is too hard to chew, and it's not something you want to leave in there. So I'm talking and pretty well leaving this alone because I want it to, um, to brown. I'm going to step away for a second again. It's funny because I heard this little sound and it was my refrigerator telling me I left the door open. Okay. And I'm going to toss it again. I'm starting to see little bits of char. And we don't want to char our food a lot because of chromide and um, the mylar effect where the, the charring can actually um, create... Uh, some elements in our body that become carcinogenic but we've got a little of this just to add to the flavor and it's it's um blistering the green beans really well and i'm going to do it again one more time now where did i get the black beans the black beans i bought on amazon i describe it in my recipe my recipe is on my website nansimmonson.com it's in my newsletter that's going out this week and I'm going to toss it one more time. You see, it's not burning. There is no oil. I didn't need oil. When I saw this, this a uh, similar recipe to this, the thing that kind of got me off on the tangent of this combination, uh, they called for two to three tablespoons of oil. The processed oils, and all oils are processed, even cold-pressed olive oil is processed, and olives not, olive oil is. Um, especially if they're heated, it changes them structurally, but the pressed oils, most of the vegetable oils are very, very high in omega-6s. And we're way out of balance with our omega-6s. All processed food will have a high level, high ratio of omega-6s, and if any, omega-3s, um, very, very low. Our ratio should be anywhere from like one, Omega, um, one omega three to let's say three omega sixes, um, or one to one, one to two, one to three. We are 
currently in America averaging one to 20 omega-6s or 30 omega-6s. I heard one expert say uh, up to 40, one to 40 ratio. Uh, that's very inflammatory. So that's why I don't do oil. I get plenty of fat in the food that I eat. Now, the green beans are blistered. I'm gonna put some of the fluid, liquid, from having soaked these shiitake mushrooms. I bought them on Amazon. I got a pound of them. They're organic. The thing is, mushrooms are, are raised in a compost, and that compost, I think, if it's not organic, could have some things in it I don't want. Would I choose not to buy mushrooms if they weren't organic? No, mushrooms are a very healthy food. But I found these online, um, and they are organic, gluten-free, forest-grown, premium dried, um, non-irradiated, non-GMO, <laughs> etc. And this was all I have of the name, so um, that's what I was looking for on Amazon. And they weren't terribly expensive. I believe, see I just wanted to steam these to turn them bright green. We're almost done with this dish. This is how quick it is. Now, and I'll, I'll finish what I was saying about the, um, the mushrooms, but first, let me add next the black beans. And the black beans I got online as well. They are fermented, sometimes I'll say salted, but they're fermented black beans. And I wrote on the recipe the brand that I chose. It was the second time I bought it. And this is the difference between the mushroom. You can't eat it dehydrated, but look how soft it is and very chewy. If the stem's really tough, I cut off the stem, but once these were soaked, and I soaked, oh, I don't know, 10, 12 of the mushrooms and cut them in half. And then what I was saying about this is that I then drained the juice from the water, from the mushrooms. I wanted to add some garlic, and I'm adding four cloves of garlic. This is chopped garlic, one teaspoon of it chopped is a clove. All right, and I'm gonna to toss this. Now garlic burns. Onions, I could throw in this pan and let them weep. That's how I dry saute any recipe that starts with onions, but your garlic is drier and it will burn and then it gets bitter. Onions tend to get sweeter, not burnt, but um, garlic gets bitter. Put a little more of this in, let it go. All right, what happens every time I add the fluid, the juice, the water, the drained water, is that it sizzles and gives me sort of a calm caramelization. Can you see this? Now, this is the magic ingredient. I'm going to add two tablespoons, and once I do that, I'm putting two because that's in the recipe, but I may choose to put a little bit more. This is gluten-free, organic tamari. And tamari is a fermented soy product. I need to go gluten-free. And what's gonna happen, I've got this on medium-high, is that the soy sauce is gonna caramelize to a degree. I went to the my nearby um, Whole Foods Market called Clark's, and I looked for some organic peanuts. Otherwise, I probably would have used um, toasted cashews. That's really good in this as well. And I found them. They were organic. They were not salted. They were um, oven roasted. Now, this is about ready to eat because, the, oh, you should smell it. The garlic is not burnt but I've got this nice glaze and it's caramelizing. I'm gonna throw in, I think I said a quarter of a cup. Uh, you could chop them, I'm gonna break them up a little, kind of break those whole peanuts in half. Oh man. Toss it. And this is lunch today. I'm making this at 11.40 and lunch. I feel like I was in the middle of something about the mushrooms and I can't remember. 
But on my recipe, I have the brand names for things, but I don't think I had the brand name for the mushrooms. But look for organic on, on Amazon. And um, we're aging powerfully with the right food. Be sure to tell friends about our mission and our movement to at any age adopt lifestyle changes including great whole food that will allow you to age with power. No more of this medications and high blood pressure and diabetes. Those things can be healed with diet. I'm wishing you the best. Bye-bye.